Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. You know, I'm just going to share this little known fact and people will make of it as they will. That Joseph Smith was in fact a modalist or a sebellion, at least for a part of his life. Now, I know most people today would say Mormonism is tritheistic. And that is probably true. They would be accurate. But originally, it actually leaned to the other end of the spectrum towards modalism. So I'm going to read some stuff out of this. Now, this is just one of many papers on this you can find on the Internet. Okay, so most discussions of the modalistic views of the founder of Mormonism take for granted he had in mind a sequential or sebellion modalism. And there is debate on whether Sibelius actually believed in sequential or simultaneous modalism. Since we're reflecting on the views of an early 19th century individual, let us quote a description of that kind of modalism from the 1830 edition of Charles Buck's Theological Dictionary, a reference work that was known and used by early Mormons. The Sibelians maintain that the Word and the Holy Spirit are only virtues, emanations, or functions of the deity and held that he who is in heaven is the father of all things, that he that descended into the virgin became a child and was born of her as a son, and that having accomplished the mystery of our salvation, he diffused himself on the apostles in tongues of fire and was then denominated the Holy Ghost. This they explained by resembling God to the Son, the illuminated virtue or quality of which was the Word, and its warming virtue, the Holy Spirit. Water is also known as that fire, ice, and steam. Billy Graham says that, T.D. Jakes. Um, the word they taught was darted like a divine ray to accomplish the work of redemption and that being rescinded, reascended into heaven, the influence of the Father were communicated after a like manner to the apostles. All right, so the Book of Mormon. Let's just look at this for just a few moments. Joseph Smith's first great prophetic project was the Book of Mormon, published in 1830. No clear distinction is made between the person of God the Father and the person of God the Son in the Book of Mormon. In fact, Jesus is clearly asserted to be both. This is stated most baldly in Esther 3.14. I am Jesus Christ. I am the Father and the Son. The Son is repeatedly referred to as the Eternal Father. For First Nephi 11:21, 13:41, Mosiah 16:15, Alma 11:37 and 38. And so we read, for example, "Behold the Lamb of God, yea, even the Eternal Father." Um, even the Eternal Father, First Nephi 11.21, And the Lamb of God is the Eternal Father and the Savior of the world. First Nephi 13.40, C.F. Mosiah 16.50, and Alma 11.37-38. Jesus also called the Father of heaven and earth. Second Nephi 25.12, Mosiah 3.8.15.4, Alma 11.39, Helaman 14.12, 16.18, Ether 4.7. The God of Israel gives some more scriptures. The Holy One of Israel gives some more scriptures. Scriptures, the Creator of heaven and earth gives some more. I said scriptures. Actually, I don't believe the Book of Mormon is scriptures. Um, more references to the Book of Mormon. The God of our fathers, which were led out of Egypt, out of bondage, and also were preserved in the wilderness by Him. Yea, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and the God of Jacob. One of the most explicit passages on the oneness of the Father and the Son in the Book of Mormon takes place in the context of the interrogation of Amulek by Zebram. And Zebram saith unto him, Thou sayest there is a true and living God. And Amalek saith, Yea, there is a true and living God. Now Zebram saith, Is there more than one God? He answereth, No. And Zebram saith again, Who is he that shall come? Is it the Son of God? And he said unto him, Yea. And Zebram saith again unto him, Is the Son of God the very eternal Father? Father, and Amalek saith unto him, Yea, he is the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth, and all things which in them is. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and he shall come into the world to redeem his people, and he shall take upon him the transgressions of those who believe on his name, and these are they that shall have eternal life. Salvation cometh to none else. Alma eleven twenty six through 40. Um, I am Jesus Christ. I am the Father and the Son. Ether 3.14. Anyhow, so just a fascinating study. And I know some people will be saying, I told you you're a cult just like the Mormons. Other people will be saying, let's win the Mormons. Who knows? Um, that's why I said, I'm just giving information. Use it as you will. Take it as you will. God bless you. God love you. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.